Hi, I'm James Weatherby from Atomos, and I'm really excited to walk you through the features of our new cloud services, which we call Atomos Cloud Studio. Atomos Cloud Studio consists of three key components, camera to cloud, streaming, and now we've added live production. But more about that in a moment. To activate any or all of these services, you're going to need to register an account with Atomos Cloud Studio. And for Camera to Cloud, you will require a Frame.io account. On your web browser, go to Atomos Cloud Studio and select Sign Up to create an account. It's important to fill out all your details correctly and to choose the location where you're most likely to be using the services from. This will give you the fastest possible experience. Once logged in, within the account tab, you can browse all the subscription options available to you. Select your level of subscription from free to our paid plans. You've got starter, classic, premium, all the way through to pro. From the classic tier onwards, each subscription tier gives you included credits. You use those credits to buy Showtime, much like you would with data on a SIM card for your mobile phone. There's an amazing progressive upload feature for C2C on any paid plan, and there are selectable quality options available for both streaming and C2C also. At any time, additional top-up credits can be purchased for more live production time. Particularly useful for the $5 starter plan, which doesn't have any credits included. For the purposes of this exercise, I'll be showing you the features and benefits of a pro subscription. This is our top tier with many options. So first, let's look at pairing our devices into our Atomos Cloud Studio account. First, you'll need to navigate to your Devices tab. And here you can see the Pair Device button. A Ninja 5 or 5 Plus with an Atomos Connect and Shogun Connect need to be on the latest version 10.90 firmware. And we also highly recommend you use the larger size iPad Pro models for an optimized experience, such as the one we're using here now. So you can pair Shogun Connects, Ninjas with an Atomos Connect module, iPhones, iPads, and or Apple TVs. You have a selection of apps to download created by Atomos, all of which are free and can be used with live production. The first is the Atomos Pro Camera app for iOS. Then we have the Atomos Surface app for iPad as your real-time production interface, or your Intercom TalkBack app when launched on an iPhone. The Atomos Pro Camera app allows you to use your iPhone as a camera source for live production. And the Atomos Surface app allows you to use your iPad as your real-time production interface during the show, or your TalkBack device when loaded on an iPhone. To pair the iPad, ensure you're connected to the internet then open the Atomos Surface app and you'll have three words. On your Atomos Cloud Studio browser, tap the Pair Device button and add the three words that you can see on your iPad. In our scenario, it's button, shallot, and recovery. We will call this iPad One as it's the only iPad in this show. The green dot on Atomos Cloud Studio signifies that the device is connected. You'll notice when you exit the app, it turns gray on your Atomos Cloud Studio. When you reopen the app, it turns green again. You'll also see on your iPad that it says it's linked to an account with the name that you called it when you set it up. We'll continue adding our other devices. Next, we'll add our first Shogun Connect. First, ensure it's connected to the internet beforehand Navigate to the Connect menu, tap Pair, and input the three words into Atomos Cloud. Ours are Color, Mercury, and Sensor. Again, it's always best practice to name your devices Shogun 1, Shogun 2, or according to their location and camera. We'll call this Shogun 1. Again, you'll also see the green dot appear on Atomos Cloud when the device has successfully connected. 
Your Shogun will also say that it's connected to the relevant account. For more info on pairing devices to Atomos Cloud Studio, refer to our setup guides. Next, we'll add our Ninja 5 with Atomos Connect. After that, we'll add another Shogun Connect. Then we're going to add an iPhone as a source through the Atomos Pro Camera app. And then we'll add an Apple TV as a source through the Atomos Monitor app. So now we'll add our Ninja 5 with Atomos Connect module. Next, we're going to connect our other Shogun. So next, we'll connect our iPhone. You'll need the Atomos Pro Camera app loaded on your phone. When you open it, the three words will appear. Next, we'll connect our Apple TV. You'll need to have downloaded the Atomos Monitor app beforehand. Open the Atomos Monitor app and input the three words into the Pair Device page on atomos.cloud. So now we've paired all our available devices. In Atomos Cloud, you could, if you wanted, select a destination for these devices, such as live streaming or to frame IO, for example, from the drop-down options under the device. But for now, I'm gonna show you how to add these devices to a live production show. Firstly, navigate to the Live Shows tab. Now we're going to create a demo show to show you how live production works. The first step is to create your show. There are three types of show you can spin up at any time, basic, standard, or advanced. We're going to be utilizing advanced for this demo. This show costs 25 credits an hour, as it shows you here in the web dialog box. By the way, on signing up, every user gets a one-time, one-hour free trial of the advanced show features with an Atomos logo watermarked output. This is shown as a demo show on the options list. We highly recommend you play around with this demo show to discover and learn about all the available features and configurations. You'll soon realize just how powerful this system is. Here is our show that we've just created, live production tutorial. We haven't started it. It says it's not running, but we are able to configure the show before it's actually begun. Click to enter the show tab. So here we have the first tab, which is the control and intercom menu. We also have the sources menu where you can add your inputs, graphics, images, and configure picture in picture. Outputs is where you configure your stream output and your monitoring sources. You can also alter the show's output format from the system menu. So now that we've quickly just run through all the tabs in live production, we'll start to simply plumb in the devices to this show one by one. Let's start with our control surface, which can be assigned in the control and intercom menu. This needs to be an iPad that you've only just paired to atomos.cloud. Click control surface one. Choose a device and select the iPad. And it will update with the relevant show name in the Atomos Surface app. You can add a second control surface if you'd like, which can be used by a graphics, vision, or audio switcher. We'll run through some of these scenarios a bit later. Multi views. Still on the control and intercom menu, we see the multi views. Here is the default layout for multi views. This allows you to go in and configure what will appear where on your iPad when you load it up. As you can see, any of these views can be changed to whatever you'd like. It's extremely customizable. Next is Intercom. This is where you can add an iPhone running the Atomos Surface app. It's like a fully featured three group talkback system and a program sound listen. Very powerful for anyone on the production wanting to hear what's going out on air and to talk to each other. Now you can move over to the Sources tab to configure your inputs. Go to Input 1 and select whichever device you'd wish for that to be. For this tutorial, we'll make it Shogun 1. Input 2 will make our Atomos Connect. Input 3 we will make our second Shogun. And our fourth input will be our iPhone.
By clicking on these devices, you can change the quality settings and change the friendly name amongst other things. You can also check if they're connected to the cloud via the green or red dot. Red signifying its lost connection. So next we have HTML graphics. So here you can paste a URL from an HTML5 graphic provider. For example, we have a link here to amazing free selections of templates from a website called Uno. It's a free graphical template with seamless integration with Atomos Cloud Studio. When you open the website link, here's what it looks like. Go to library and you'll see that they have thousands of free graphics for you to choose from. This is where you can customize it. When you finish customizing your graphic, you just copy the URL and add it into the URL slot in Atomos Cloud. Easy as that. So now, stills. You can also add still images. These can be PNG with alpha channels, used to create composites with other assets in live production, as you've just seen. So here is where you add your still images. Backgrounds. These are quite straightforward and can be any color that you desire. They can also be a gradient if you wish. Backgrounds are here. But in multi-views, we can reconfigure this to wherever we want. So next we'll discuss picture in picture. So that's in the sources menu under pips. Before we start this demo, it will be easier to start the show service so you can see the interaction of the web interface with the iPad. I'm going to press start here. Now you need to set how long your show will run for and it will let you know at approximately what time it should finish and how many credits you'll be using. You can manually stop it at any point. It does take a few minutes for the servers to load up. But as you can see here, it does say that the show is starting. So just wait a moment. When the show has begun, you'll see all your devices sparking to life. When I cut to pip one in the program, you will see a number of things have happened. All the tallies have changed. The tallies denoted in red in this case make up all of the sources used to create PIP1. PIP1 is composed of a background with sources over the top. The background source is from bank B, and as you can see, it also has its tally light on. When switching a PIP to line, the four camera operators will see their tallies switch on as all four cameras are switched to line. So we have our background and our three sources, and we can control what happens with each of them by using this source button. When you press the source button, pip one, two, three, and four will appear down here. When I select pip one and then select the background, what you'll see in the program window is the white corners will move from program down to this pip button down here. This is because what we're doing now is selecting the source for the background of PIP1. I can select that source from any of the sources on the multi-view. I can also go to bank B and change it to any of these backgrounds, colors, images. You then want to switch the program again. So I can use the multi-view to select the source that is the specific part of that pip. If I go back to bank A and select pip one, layer one, layer one is going to be at the top left and I can select another source for that layer. So source, 
pip one, layer one. Now I just tap to select that source. If I go to pip one, layer two, I can select another source for the PIP1 window. So in terms of controlling what the sources are within the PIP, it's actually done with this source button down here. We're sourcing for each of the various layers within the picture in picture. So this section is part of the real time system. The fact that you can see cameras coming in from camera one, for example, is because I've got a server running and because I can process those pixels and I can see those on the iPad. So let's now switch to the website so I can show you how I can modify the layout of the different pips. Jumping over to the website, we go to sources and then go down to pips. You'll see I can start to change one of the pips. What we have is three layers. I can select these layers and manipulate them. Layers one, two, and three. I can turn them on and off. So let's turn two and three off and hit save. And as you can see, these will disappear now on the iPad. So those layer two and three have now disappeared because that's my saved picture in picture one. The actions on the browser have now been reflected on the iPad. One thing to note is that on the website, there are no images. This is because it's not real time. All adjustments made and saved in the browser will be reflected on the iPad. On the side panel to the right, you can also change the position and size of the window within the pip. So you can do this with your mouse, but you can also do it manually. Another option is you can mask the image and crop part of it off. When you click off it, you'll see it's now cropped. This is a powerful way to take an image and take it into the cropped area as a source. So I'll just show you what that's actually done. So as you can see, that crop has been reflected on the iPad. Once again, this can be moved around to suit your creative needs. You also have the option to add borders. So once you're happy with your look, hit save and it will appear on the iPad. Once again, this can be moved around to suit your creative needs. You can of course add in other pip layers as required. The other thing that's really important to understand with this system is we have alpha channel built into the whole platform. And this allows me to do one clever and powerful thing. Turning off layer one and two, and I'll turn on layer three and make layer three full screen. And hit save. So what you'll now see is I've got an image that is over the entire picture. As I've cut to it on three, you'll see that three is set to input three. You can tell that because there's a three up in the top right hand corner. I can change that around. As I'm cutting, you can see what I cut sits at the top. What I've started to create is this mini composite. What we see here is my background layer my foreground layer with layer three, the graphic source. Because the graphic source has an alpha channel built into it, you can see what I've actually built now is a composite. You can then move that composite around. If you go back to the website, you can see we've created a key that sits in the corner. So because the graphic source has an alpha channel built into it, it's HTML graphics. You can see what I've actually built now is a composite. You can then move that composite around. If you go back to the website, you can see we've created a key that sits in the corner. If I move around and click save, you will see that that composite has moved. This of course can be from an image player or anything else for that matter. 
So we can make keys that sit in the corner or full screen graphics that comes from our HTML system. It becomes not just a pip, it becomes a way of creating mini compositions. This creates interesting graphic sources and because we have multiple pips, it allows you to create interesting and preset pips in your shows. So flicking over to the outputs tab. So set your RTMPS streaming output to your desired social channel. So just grab your stream key. Your URL. And hit save. So you can also add monitoring sources here to be Apple TV that we added earlier by clicking add monitor and selecting the Apple TV. Once you've configured your monitoring sources and your stream output, you've set all your sources, your graphics, your stills, your picture in pictures and your backgrounds, you're now ready. Next, we'll show you around our real-time production interface, the iPad. The first tab is the main switching tab and is called Home. To switch your program, ensure you've selected the program on the iPad, signified by the white borders, and tap to switch. Tap to swap over to the preview monitor and ensure your white border lines are around the preview source. You can also tap to switch the preview. You can audition a cut or a switch before doing it live. Tap the timecode on the top right corner of the device to find your on-air switch. This is a kill switch for the program. Have this on to send to your streaming outputs. Turn it off to kill the feed. In the Home tab, you can also swap between your different multi-views, which are called Banks A and Bank B. You can have one iPad with this bank running vision switching and a second person with this bank loaded running graphics or picture-in-picture -picture from another iPad, for example. Here, you also have your basic intercom functionality, allowing you to listen in and talk back to these customizable groups. We'll cover intercom and talk back in more details shortly. There is also an audio mixer panel, which shows you levels for each of your inputs. These are real-time levels for each input. You can cut them with the touch of a button. Like a kill switch in the audio menu, if you need to use it that way. In audio on the home tab, you also have auto which is where the audio will follow your camera source. So if you didn't want AFV and you wanted to just keep your audio to only input one, that's an easy way to do it. So that's the audio menu in the home. You also have a dissolve transition function. Tap to fade between two inputs by pressing auto or use your finger to do this manually on the mix slider. You could also use these to create composites out of your video inputs. On the home page, you have your intercom here for your iPad. So here's where you can turn your master control for intercom, talk and listen. The actual intercom page shows all three intercom groups, but these buttons means you're listening to the intercom in that group, and that's your microphone on off for that group. If you tap and hold your finger over the icon, you will get the ability to alter the volume. You might want certain channels louder than others, Perhaps if you had your director on one channel, on one group, you might want that louder than the other groups. Here is your program monitor for your audio. Tap to turn it off and on and set the volume by holding your finger. So this is clicked at the moment, meaning that we are monitoring the program. Then you have a kill switch for your audio feed out of the program. We'll move over to the sound tab. This is your audio menu and is a comprehensive audio switcher. 
On the left, you can see all your inputs and their live levels. Fade them to wherever you want. And you can see that reflected on the master. You also have the ability to group your sources. So you do that by selecting it, and it turns gray, and you just set the group that you want that input to be a part of. So for example, we might have left and right channels on inputs one and two. So what we can do is group them together by uh, setting input one to group one, then moving over to input two, and also setting that to group one. You can see this then reflected in DCA1, which you can play with the level of independently. As you can see, we have a few options for each channel. You can EQ each input, you can also pan them left and right. This is live and another iPad loaded with the same show would see these changes on their iPad reflected live. We recommend you use a second iPad. It can be anywhere in the world and getting someone to mix audio independently. Also in the audio menu, we have this feature called a pre-fader listen which allows you to just listen to an audio source before it's faded up. Just tap PFL and you get to listen to that source, but it won't be sent to the program. Okay, so that's how the audio menu works, which is really straightforward and audio mixers will be extremely familiar with all of these. I also think that it's worth mentioning that in the audio tab in the home menu, if you have deselected your sources here, then they will be inactive in the sound tab. If your director wanted to just quickly cut some audio, they can do that easily in the home menu. So we'll reselect all our audio inputs so they're all live again. Next, we'll move to the intercom menu. As you can see, we have three groups in our intercom. And the way you can think about these groups is like channels or radio frequencies that you can tune in and out of. Any person in the show with a device connected can listen and talk back to any of these three groups in any way they like. If they always want to be listening to group one, then they can tap there and that's live. They can also set the volume with their finger. They might want group one really quiet and they might be the director on group one, and they might wanna have their talk back going all the time so everyone can hear them. And you might have a second group, which might be your cameraman. You might have your director and your cameraman locked into group two. They're all listening to group two and they're talking back when relevant. And group three might be something like a director talent line. So you might only have your director and your talent looking into this group, and that's for them to converse independently of groups one and two. So now we'll move to the intercom config menu. This is where you can go into group one and see who exactly is looped in and see everyone who is listening. Tap a group to see which devices are listening to this channel. You can manually force people to be listening if you need them to. Another thing to note is that when you tap someone onto a group, it will also activate their talkback. They will not only be listening to that group, but you will also be hearing them back. So we might just want our director and cameraman on this channel. So we might just leave it like that. We might want everyone on this channel to make an announcement, but we can also hear them. This is where you can sort of jam people onto different channels, like so. We recommend all your cameramen, crew, and talent download the Atomos Surface app and you add them as talkback devices in the control and intercom menu in atomos.cloud. You can then configure who's listening to what and when within the intercom config menu on the iPad. So just something to note is that when loaded on an iPhone, the Atomos Surface app only gives you talkback functionality. So get everyone involved in the show to download this app for talkback during the production. That's the intercom config menu. So now we'll just slide over to the more menu. The first thing to note here is the perform sync button. We recommend doing this once you've added in all your devices. Don't do it during a live show 
because there may be a cut in audio, but this will just quickly synchronize all of your devices. So here is the multi-view tab. So with the labels button, we can just toggle on and off the labels on each multi-view item. Here we can toggle the VU meters on and off for each input. And down here is turning on and off our program VU meters. We'll keep them on. Obviously, these aren't baked into the program. So here we can select whether we want meters on the program or the preview. So here on the right hand side, we have a simple way of if you just want to quickly push to talk to an Intercom group or slide it to lock it to always monitoring and talking. You might want to be always listening to a particular group. You can select which group and toggle that here. Lastly is the tally light system. On your Atomos devices, you will see that they have a tally light. Red means that your source is currently live and being sent to the program output and green means your feed is in preview and could be cut next. So your cameraman knows if their feed is live or not. To turn off your show, first turn the on-air button off. Then navigate to your show in atomos.cloud and stop the show. And simply type stop to confirm the end of your show. So thanks so much for watching this demo video on Atomos Live Production. If you require more support, please visit atomos.com support. Go get creative.